I got a great topic idea from a viewer, a subscriber, so please subscribe and send me any questions you have. And it's about fear and anxiety and around abundance, things like that. And I asked the person, where do you feel it? And she said, like a hole in the center of her body from the chest to the stomach. So I said, okay, let's, let's talk about that. Because I want to walk you through how I deal with these kind of issues myself and with my clients. And I also want to give the commenter a little kind of a mini session right here. Here we go. So we have a fear around abundance. And a lot of us can relate to that in the last few years. Um, there's, there's been a lot of that going around. There was the whole epidemic. Everybody feels like uh, the economy is far from secure going forward. And so there's a, there are a lot of issues with that. And the way that we can use those issues in our own personal development is that we find where we have a blockage. So my overall kind of worldview is that any blockages that we have, anywhere that we need to grow and evolve and learn lessons, <clears throat> we will manifest scenarios in our lives, in our relationships, in our finances, our careers, whatever. We will manifest these situations that we can't really ignore. And most of us will probably end up just being caught up in the drama of the situation, the emotional turmoil, and go into modes of overthinking and not necessarily being more effective at dealing with the situation, but sometimes just throwing a lot of gasoline on the fire. So how do we deal with it? So let's say we have an issue of fear around money, abundance, and like the commenter, we feel that issue in the heart stomach area. We feel a big missing space and there's anxiety or whatever around that. Okay. So first of all, the, the, the solar plexus stomach chakra is about fire. It's about confidence. It's about feeling good enough, feeling worthy. It's also about all the opposite. It's about what puts out your fire, what makes you have a lack of self-confidence, what makes you feel unworthy. And a lot of these things go back to childhood where we had to fight for survival in whatever way. Maybe we were in competition with our siblings may you know we we had whatever traumas we had with parents at school all the issues of not feeling good enough and not feeling good enough could make you metaphorically lie down and die give up right or it could make you an over overachiever so your fire could go into overdrive or it could barely be there, right? 
And what we want is we want it to be right at the spot where we want it, right at the perfect spot for you. So think of it in terms of with that chakra, with the fire chakra, it's about what am I worth? Am I worthy? Am I worth less? Am I good? Am I good enough? Am I not? We all got messages on both sides of that, but the not good enough messages tend to land with a little more force than the, oh, you're great messages for most of us. Um, unfortunately, you know, we focus on the negative sometimes and we don't even pay attention sometimes to the love that we receive, the encouragement we receive, because it has to get through the barrier of our insecurity, our fears, whatnot, right? Okay, so if we feel like we're not good enough in the fire chakra, then that goes to the heart chakra where we become disheartened, disheartened, is that the word? Whatever. Um, <laughs> that we lose heart. We lose that self-love. We lose that exuding of, of love for everything that we were born with and that most of us got traumatized out of quite early and life became a struggle. So we become disconnected from self-love and we lower down, feel not good enough. So we start compensating. We might go into overdrive, like I said, or we might go into laziness, into giving up and then you know, it's also kind of like a mixing board, right? We might, we might be overdrive in this area and really underperforming in this area. And there's a lot of areas. Okay. So look in the, in the solar plexus chakra, feel in your stomach the feeling of whatever it is for you, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve. Okay. And, you know, if that's too much for you, don't do it. If that's too triggering to you, don't do it. My work is for people who can handle confronting themselves and some people that's not appropriate. They need a gentler approach. I don't have that. Sorry. For those of you who, who can deal with a little bit more of a direct approach, dare to feel the feeling. It's already there to whatever degree of, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, whatever your words are for that. You might have your own special words, your own special belief around that. And then feel in the heart what the words are there. And the words could be something like, nobody loves me, nobody likes me. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody sees me. We all have our origins in love and we all got traumatized into fear on some level. So when you process that, um, like, for example, I was doing a self-healing last week. And then this feeling came up, nobody loves me. Immediately, my brain went into listing all the people who definitely love me. And I'm like, 
yeah, I know that. Okay, shut up, brain. Right? This isn't about figuring it out mentally. Okay? Intellectually, I know there are people who love me. More than one. Okay, cool. But that little inner child in the heart that has this issue that I was working on last week, he has that feeling nobody loves me. It's my job to kind of carry him over that threshold, you know, from the pain and suffering into my world, right? No matter how much you've healed, you have these little parts from childhood, whatever, these traumas that then you adapted to. You formed a personality, you formed life strategies, right? So instead of going into the brain and saying, I know people love me, I know I'm good enough and all of that, what we want to first do is kind of surrender into the fact that these feelings exist. Not that, the, that they are true, okay? Let's differentiate. I'm not saying the feelings are true. I'm saying that they are stuck in there. And that's where we block our healing with our mind a lot of times because we'll be like, I know I'm good enough and I know people love me. What's this stupid feeling I'm having? This is ridiculous, right? That doesn't change the energy. That's just mental crap, okay? It might be totally true, but it doesn't work. What works, what I find in my own process and with my clients is walking through that valley of the shadow of death and realizing that's the only way you could figure out that you're immortal. When I do past life regression, little side note, I take people through a past life and most of the time we go through the past death and then the afterlife part. And a lot of times the first reaction people have is like, oh shit, I thought I was going to be dead. I'm not dead. I'm, I'm more alive than I was then. Like this is way better than when I was stuck in that body. Um, so anyway, your core is love. Okay. But the feeling of not being loved is there in all of us. You know why? Because when you were a baby, you wanted what you wanted when you wanted it. If you wanted to, <clears throat> to breastfeed or bottle feed or whatever you did, you wanted it now. And if you had to cry for a little too long, at some point you might have have gotten the idea even when you were pre-verbal on some level you got the idea these people don't care whether I live or die these people don't love me uh-oh I'm screwed life is dangerous what the hell am I gonna do and I'm saying this feeling gets stuck in your body before you even have those words to apply to the feeling okay so it doesn't help to say, I know people love me and whatever. What you want to do is you want to go back to that feeling that that child had and then hold the child. Don't reject the child. If that part of your heart is saying nobody loves me, just say, okay, and feel it in your heart. Don't try to override it with all the knowledge you have of who does love you. We can do that in a moment afterwards, right? And if we feel I'm not good enough, just surrender. Okay, I'm not good enough. You know, it's not agreeing to it. It's just surrendering for a moment to that feeling and quitting being at odds with the feeling. The fact is you have the feeling Feel it. You know, your body will heal itself emotionally 
if you will sit in the middle of the emotion, if you sit in the middle of not good enough, and, and remember, now this is an important little thing. And this is something, if you're working with me, these little things I'll catch you at, right? You're sitting in the feeling of not good enough, right? But you're, what you're really doing is you're embracing the little kid that felt not good enough and you're loving that kid, okay? You're not trying to prove that you are good enough. You're not trying to wallow in that you're not good enough. You're just sitting with the feeling. Okay, and so as you sit with the feeling, which you probably have never done without trying to get rid of it, figure it out, whatever, then it will naturally start to move and reshape its environment, which is you. So, if you sit in the feeling of nobody loves me, then sit in that feeling. And again, of course, you, you, you don't need at this point to start arguing with the feeling because you've been doing that your whole life and it didn't work and it's still stuck there. So try my thing now. So then... What's going to happen is, and it might take many times doing this, that you feel the inner child maybe remember what happened when you were a kid. And then all I want you to do is love that kid. Let the kid come and sit on your lap and cry and hold the kid. Don't try to fix anything. Don't try to talk the kid out of their pain. Just hold the kid and let the kid cry. Okay. Your inner child needs to be held by you. And then you might cry. You might have all kinds of emotional reactions. You might have a reaction of wanting to reject the kid. Because you've been rejecting the kid your whole life. You've been ashamed of your shame. Think of it. You've been ashamed of your shame. You've been ashamed of not feeling love. You've been ashamed of your fear. Well, that just puts this impenetrable lacquer over your negative emotions so that you can't get at them. Okay, that's why it's important to go into those emotions. And if shame is the emotion, go into shame. If you need to process shame before you process lack of love or unworthiness, process shame first. And it could be layered in all kinds of things, you know. But let the emotion be there. Let the inner child feel the feeling and love the child as the child is in the middle of this pain and suffering. And then it's just like if you have a kid, the kid goes and plays. The kid runs out the door and is playing in the yard, whatever. And now the kid runs back with a scrape, you know, mommy, ow, tears, whatever, daddy. And they get in your lap. And let's say, you know, you don't even need to do anything to this scrape. You know, you don't even need to put any disinfectant. It's not serious, right? They're just feeling some pain. And they're crying and they're whatever. And you let them be on your lap. 
and you hold them. And at some point, they'll get over the pain. And they won't want to be on your lap anymore. They're going to want to go run and play. And then you say, what about that scrape? Oh, yeah, it's, it's better. I'm, I'm good. I want to go play. Being on your lap now is a claustrophobic thing they don't want to do anymore. They want to run away from you and let them do that. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen with that wounded inner child of yours. Every time you feel one of these horrible emotions, that's an inner child aspect running up to you with a boo-boo. Put that kid on your lap. Let that kid be on your lap as long as it needs to be. And when the kid is like, I don't want to be here anymore. This is boring and runs away. You just heal the level of this issue. You did it. Now, there might be many layers of the issue. I'm not going to bullshit you. I'm working on issues now that that I've been working on forever. But I met but I cleared the top layers and now it's a, a very much deeper layer that's really kind of the master key to the whole thing, right? So don't get discouraged when the issue comes back because the issue's held in many different ways in your body. Because, you know, think of it. Every time you felt not good enough, one little not good enough thing might have got stuck in you, right? And then there's not just one, and they're not all in one spot, right? So that's why it's so important to locate where on your body you're having the feeling. So love the inner child that has the feeling. So back to the fear around abundance and the third and fourth chakras, okay? You make your own words, whether it's unworthy, right? If we feel unworthy, we will either limit our abundance or we will be, we'll go overboard in trying to have more material abundance to feed that unworthiness monster and it will never get satisfied. And feeling unloved, unlovable, or any of that, let it be there. Accept unloved, unlovable. Don't try to talk yourself out of it. Because when you let it be there, you might realize, for example, like a lot of people, they become dancing monkeys for the world to try to get the love of people that if they just took a moment, they'd realize they don't even give a shit what those people think. It's just a reflexive thing. They become people pleasers to assholes that they don't even care about pleasing if they just took a moment to reconsider. Are you doing that? You might be. And so when you allow those emotions to be felt and when you love the inner child that feels them, you will feel a certain release. You'll feel a certain heaviness leave your body. And then if you're like me, you'll barely have a honeymoon before the next layer pops up, <laughs> giving you a chance to heal that too. Um, not promising any Shangri-Las. I'm just saying what you really are is love, is that fire. And in your human experience, you had to experience all this other stuff. So try what I said, ask any questions that you want in the comments, not promising it'll end up in another video, but try it out, see how it works for you. And if you need a little hand holding going through this process, I'm available for phone sessions or whatever, andysway.com, you can find out all about it. 
Um, and again, any questions, put them in the comments. Please like, share, subscribe. That would make me thrilled and have a great day.